So here I've got the burner from the Luxata multi-fuel stove and it's a great little burner because it allows you to burn as it says multi-fuels. Well I've never seen a demonstration of this done using all the different fuels so I'm going to do that today and to do that you need to actually switch out the nozzles. They're on the inside of the burner here. It actually comes with this bag here and in this bag it's got a couple of different nozzles and some gaskets one of the most important things is the multi-tool to allow us to switch out the nozzles okay so this little tool has a little wrench on the end and you fit it down inside and you just twist we'll see how easily it twists and take out your nozzle So I've taken the nozzle out, got to remember to be careful with this. This is for the naphtha or the white gas. It's got the smallest point in it, smallest pinhole in it, sorry. And then the next one that we want is the one with the biggest. And the reason we want it bigger is there's a chart. I will, um, I'll, I'll put a link to the chart down below here. I might even screenshot it. We'll see, see how I get it going. So the Luxata multi-fuel stove can use isobutane, butane, and propane. As long as you have the correct adapters, you can use them. So we'll fit that in our tool like so. And there we go. So this stove already comes with an adapter for isobutane right on it. So let's start with that. We'll get this on here. We'll make sure this is closed. There we go, it's ready to go. Not as simple as that. If you have the right nozzle on there, it'll work just like that every time, light up right away. If you have the incorrect nozzle on there, if you have the liquid gas, the naphtha, the white gas, nozzle on there it doesn't give enough oxygen so it cannot it cannot ignite like it wants to it needs that mixture of oxygen with it, it needs to be able to spread out to be able to light up properly so that was that with the correct nozzle on there and that's why we've got the different nozzles with this model with an adapter such as this one so this little adapter here will allow us to use these cans of butane so let's put this on here it's pretty simple you just push and turn. We're done. Adapter on, no screwing, no messing around. So what I can do to make it easier is actually screw this on here first. So this is called the Lindell valve. Lindell valve, Lindell, somebody will correct me. On. So now with that, we've got our regular butane. So let's give that a shot. Works perfectly. And this is great because this gas is, at least here, in uh, Victoria, Vancouver Island. Relatively easy to get. Some grocery stores is pretty inexpensive and it burns efficiently in the summer. You wouldn't want to use this in the winter time. You're going to use your isobutane or even what we're going to come to next here is propane. So let's change our adapters because I got a special adapter for that as well. There's our propane adapter. And it fits just on top like so. We got our propane adapter in, same sort of idea. We're gonna turn it on and it should just light up nicely. And that was powerful enough that that knocked the uh, spreader off. I'll have to remember that. I'll have to tighten that up. The spreader normally should be pretty tight on there. It should be a tighter fit. I guess over time it's loosened up a little bit. So 
We'll get some pliers, we'll uh, crimp that in a little bit. So there's lots of control on that, on this little knob here, little valve. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Very versatile with those three different gases and all with the one nozzle. Very versatile and with these three different gases. So like I said, we've got the propane, isobutane, and just plain old butane. So the other one it works with is naphtha, it's a white gas. And for that, we're gonna have to change out to the specific nozzle for it. We'll do that in just a moment here. To use the white gas, not only do we need the different nozzle, but we also need a bottle with a pump. And that'll pressurize the liquid gas inside there. So let's get some in here. And we'll put the pump inside. Now, somebody talked about getting this. So this valve connects here. And a lot of people have commented that, oh, you could turn this black knob here so we don't have to turn the whole canister upside down. This doesn't turn. This is not, um, oh, there we go. Now it's making a liar out of me. It does turn, but not easily on this. So I'm not sure if that's the design fault or not. But anyway, doesn't matter. We're going to spin it around. So what I do so that's about 30 pumps. That's enough. Now we need to get this off of here. So there is a bend in the tubing up here, which one side won't allow you to get the tool in. The other side will. Just get in there. So this is a very, very tiny opening. Be very careful with the brass fittings on these. You don't want to strip them. So the lighting of this, as you, you're going to see, let's get this screwed on here. So what we want to do for this is we want it to actually get a little bit of the fluid in there first. There we go. That's gonna give us a preheat. So this preheat will actually heat that tube on the top known as the generator. That's gonna heat up the generator and vaporize the gas inside. And you can actually hear it doing that itself already. It's so warm out here. But that's because we've been lighting the other ones out up. Once it just about goes out normally, I would turn it on full blast. Now the interesting thing with this one is I've completely turned it off. So there's still gas in the line that's going through here. It's still getting vaporized. It's gonna take a little bit to burn off. You gotta let it burn off. Just allow it to do its thing. Don't blow that out. You want all that fuel out of there for when you pack it up. Okay, it's out now. So let's do that. So I think this does, I think this could turn if I wanted it to. Maybe if I practice, practice. Maybe if I start uh, using it a little more. Um, I noticed that there's a small screw up here, maybe you have to loosen that. I don't know. So I just want to show these nozzles. This is the one for the naphtha. The white gas. And I don't know if you can see in there, but it's got a little tiny speck of a hole in there. This is the one that we use for the isobutane, the propane, and stuff like that. And as you can see, the hole in the top is a little bit wider, allows a little bit more oxygen in there. And it fits down right in there. That's where we replace it with this tool here. So 
So just screw it in, just like so. Tight. Like I said before, this piece here is the spreader and it goes on top like so. Just right there. So it's really easy to lose that piece if you're not paying attention. Should fit on there tighter, but it's also got to come off so you can change the nozzles. So the Lixata Multifuel comes with its own bottle that we use to pressurize, and this can actually carry the fuel if you want to. And the fuel that this carries can be anything, but for what I'm using, I'm using the Coleman fuel, Coleman camp fuel, which is naphtha or white gas. And with an adapter, we can use the propane. Here's the propane adapter. This one is called the uh, G-Bell Camp. Then for the, if you just want to use a butane can, there's one of these adapters. And this is the butane, straight butane in the can. You've seen stoves that use just these can butane. And the isobutane that works straight off of the valve itself, the Lindal valve that it has. And here we go. So that's four different fuels that I've shown today. You can put kerosene in here, you can put lamp oil in here. Uh, just a matter of how you light it up differently. Uh, you can also do alcohol, but I've heard that alcohol can destroy the inner lining of these types of bottles. So be careful with that, or if you have one bottle that's specifically for alcohol, just use it for that. I think it's a great stove, and it's very versatile, depending on what fuel you wanna use. So when would we wanna use these different fuels? Well, butane itself is really good in the summer because when it's warm out, this'll give you lots of heat, lots of cooking power that you need during the summertime. So there's no reason to shy away from this. Then the next one below that is isobutane. This can be used down to minus 15 Celsius, minus 15 Fahrenheit. I'm gonna put the, the numbers down below here. Straight old propane, I believe it's around minus 40, minus 40 Celsius that you can go down to with this. So very good in, in cool weather, but it is a very heavy container to pressurize it, to keep it at a, at a state where it's a gas. And then Coleman camp fuel, doesn't matter because it's, it's already a liquid. So you can burn this in very cold environments and you'll be good to go. It all just matters on the where you're going, what application you want to use and what you prefer to use and what's available locally for you and price. Think about that when you're deciding on your next stove. All right, thanks for coming along today and we'll catch you in the next one. See ya.